Hello friends, uh, I'm coming back to the channel. So I'm going to proceed uh, with our institutional trading series or smart money uh, way of trading, smart money concepts. And today we are going to be refining boom and crash order blocks. So uh, in this video, we are not going to use an example of Forex, but I will also make a dedicated video maybe on USD, on gold, whatever for, for such you get. Uh, but right now, I believe you guys are grasping the concept, much as there is more to it. There is more to trading. There is a lot that you need to understand. But I believe when we do things repeated, uh, repeatedly, we understand them better. So when I come here, actually, I want to do it in the shortest time possible. I want to show you that you guys, if you wanted to trade, and then you can get off, let's say, 30 minutes of your time every day you can know where the market is going you place your entry and then you do something else so uh, for those that want signals and you pretend to be busy this is a good video for you yeah so this horizontal line i'm just looking at this string structure that was broken you get so basically for me i get uh, actually when you come on the charts everything should make a lot of sense to you you get just like i told you when you look at this consolidation now you know what it means you get if you had understood let's say this consolidation you get you would know uh, that would later get an impulse move that came down you get so i've told you i've always been telling you you get I've always been telling you that you shouldn't fear these consolidations, but they prepare for something, you get? But then I look at, I looked, uh, for, for this example, we are going to look at, consider this swing structure that was broken, you get? Much as there are these points here. But then there is a major swing structure that was broken. So each time we, we break a swing structure, one of the things that comes to our minds is that, uh, is that uh, something could happen, you get? The market reacts whenever we break a swing structure. So now, one of the things that we would anticipate, this is like a break, actually, this is a break of structure, you get? So when we break a structure, one of the things that we look out for is, one of the things that comes to our minds is that there is another block, or oh, there is, there is a, uh, there is a supply zone, given that we are in a bearish trend. Order block, supply and demand, or resistance, all mean the same thing to me, why? It's because they call for the for the same course of action or some kind of reaction uh, when they happen. You get so basically we moved from this point, from this swing point. You get to this point. So we we'll measure off this area here. We we'll look at it keenly. Is there a possible reversal? Is there a possible target that we are likely to hit? Yes. And then the next thing when we break a swing structure. Oh, if at all, even if the trend had started, I told you. Whenever we get rejections, we get rejections are some of the signs that the market intends to go up, you get. So basically in this video, I want to show you that you would get in on this candle, you get. And now I want us to refine the order block or the bullish order block or the, the bullish part of the market where I would get in so that we get in to be part of this move. You get this is boom 1000. For those who will go and check out right now. I'll not take long to upload this video. I, I thank those have turned that have turned on the post notification. They they watch my videos right away. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. More so if I make sense when I'm teaching. You get when I'm teaching. So this line here that I've drawn. Remember, I'm looking for the bias, but I want to show you that you would get in here. So basically, we look at we you know in trading, we retail traders we look at what has been given to determine what will come. You get to determine what will come. So, given that we have a bias that the market broke this swing structure, but possibly could be coming back into the, the zone here, then we get this nice rejection. Now, for me, when I get this nice rejection, rejecting prices from down, you get. Now, for me, I draw this horizontal line. What is it for? Let me even extend it. You get. I can even make it as long as I can make it. Why? It's because for me in this area here, I will not take any selling trade. You get, I cannot sell below this point. You get, because we rejected here. What am I going to be looking out for? I look out for bullish confirmations, buying confirmations. We rejected here. This is a daily time frame. This is a big time frame that I can really consider. Remember, I have targets this side to hit you get i have targets 
to hit. You get these points, these points when we shall see on H4, you get? As we shall see on H4. So then what do I do next? I highlight off this area. But uh, uh, given that maybe you're just starting out, you may be required to highlight the whole of it, starting on the daily. But for me, mostly I start, I can even start on H4 up to H1 and M15. But then I look at this area. So it means this rejection here, why am I highlighting it off? It is acting as I I believe because now I'm anticipating this is the area. Given that for me, there is a way I relate to the daily time frame. And I, I, I always told you for those that have been here long enough is that for me, my strategy is based off the daily time frame and M15. So it means we, we, we do analysis from the daily time frame, but we, we take entries mostly on M15. You get but we shall be seeing as uh, in future how, how it all goes. So now we we'll highlight of this area. So which means this rejection here, you get it created a demand area. You get it created a demand area. What do I do next? We are refining, which means we go for the order flow. We go on small time frames, given that we want to determine this a bullish uh, a bullish trade. You get our best position to get in. So I can go on H4. You get out. Let me go to H4. We have to get the best point. You get, we have to get the best point that we can get in. You get, so you can see I have this line here. Don't forget this line here. I told you for me below here, I'm not taking entries. And actually, there is something funny about the market is that whenever we approach such lines, you can see the market moving aggressively. You get moving aggressively. And I told you, whatever, most of the time, the market is moving aggressively, then sometimes you need to be skeptical. So now, this is H4. This part here that is highlighted, it has been the week, the candle week of the candle, okay? the candle week of the daily candle, you get? The week part, you get? So now on H4, what am I looking out for? I'm looking to highlight still the candle to the body. I'm, I'm narrowing, I'm, I'm reducing, the, the 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 scope you get i want to get that point so now the point i was trying to bring out is that uh we we narrow down our scope you get we narrow down our scope or our area that we are looking at you get so now what next remember this we are looking for the rejections the most recent rejections you get remember we are not buying any at any point we are not selling at any point here what are we looking out for when we get below? We look for bullish confirmations, you get? And this is H4, you get? You can see that this is H4. Then, what next? What we do is that uh, we go on H1, you get? We go to H1 to see the best point that would get in, you get? The best point that would consider to get in. This is the order flow, or this is what we call to refine. So basically, you can see that uh, on H4, this is the area, but even H1 has a rejection on it. You get it has a rejection on, on it. So we can go further looking for these rejections, you get, but then they will keep pushing us down to this point, you get. But now, when I reach H1, what am I looking out for? You get. Remember, by the Fubu Man crash, you cannot set pending orders, you only set manual orders. You go in the market manually. So you can set maybe price alerts, you get, on MT5. So now, what we see here on H1, we get something really nice, something really nice. What is it? We can see that we broke a structure to the upside. You get, we broke a structure to the upside. We got a break of market structure. We get happy about that. Before we broke this structure here, for me, I always like to measure off this move that broke structure. You get, what am I looking out for? Did we buy at a discount? You get, basically now I measure from here to yes to here where we broke structure so you can see that here the market came into the red into discount you get we bought at a serious discount you get we bought at a discount at this level here and then we sold at a premium so which means we bought at prices where they were low we sold at prices where they were high now i start looking for this area now this area remember this is a fake out you get we are looking for order blocks in this area here this is the area where we will look out for entries to get in entries that are below here below this this highlighted line 
all this horizontal line that I drew, you get there is this horizontal line that you're seeing there. We are not interested in that. But then in this area here, we are looking for bullish confirmations. You get we are looking for bullish confirmations. But then we can see that outside here we can we broke structure. So now this one here, this area here becomes let me let me show it to you. This area here becomes our our demand zone because we've broken structure. So now we always say we normally say that uh, uh, we normally say that the last opposite candle before we go up. So basically, this is the rejection. You get we can see that we got an impulse move that broke. We broke structure with the displacement. You get so basically this is like a rejection. We were selling and then we rejected prices like that. You get so now here. What am I looking out for? What am I looking out for? Uh, this is what I'm looking out for. Given that this is the area, this is the candle that we are considering to look for entries. But then this bullish candle that you're seeing here, that you're seeing here, this bullish candle, it has wicks on both sides. You get. But then we can proceed to highlight. I can go on now. This technique, by this, it requires you to backtest a, a, a little more. You get. For this, I'm going to change the color so that we can see it possibly well. You get so this is the rejection. So, which means this is the flip zone where we are going to look for entries for sniper entries. By the way, we are looking for sniper entries. So, now given that on H1, we can go on M15 on M15 where we are going to like to take our entries. You get so finally, we are here on M15. The chart has loaded. So, remember. Uh, this is the area that we are looking at. You get this is the area we are, where we are looking at. This is the last point where I highlighted. Now, what do we see about this point on M15? Remember, on M15, we are looking at this zone. You can see that inside our highlighted point on on the daily, we have. Now, if you watch the previous video, now you can start to understand that this is a pivot. You get this is a pivot. You get. So basically, if you wanted early entries, this candle here this candle here that got rejected in its body given that this is a small time frame that candle there this line here, i can take an entry there you can see that the market was trying to go below but they weren't you get so here you place your entry and then for you you wait on the daily your targets are far up you get your targets are far up so basically you would get in there you get you'd get in there so which means this is the area where I would get in let me show you you get that is our buying this is our buying area and then if you're to go back on the daily time frame this point is the candle that you were seeing the 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 large candle actually let me show you this by the sometimes the more you take long on the charts you can know the candles very well you can relate what is happening on big time frames to small time frames just by looking at the charts so we are going to see that this candle was the one that was bearish you get on the daily i'm going to go back on the day this is the candle that was bearish and then we got a bullish candle that started uh somewhere like uh at, at its tip so we have something we are going to see this we are going to verify on the daily you get so there is that kind of for it it started like here and then it moved above it so which means on the daily we broke structure as we are going up you get and then that candle closes about here you get that candle close uh about that point you get so let's go back on the daily uh, let's go back on the daily these things really should make a lot of sense to you as you trade truly if i can tell you so this is what I, these are the candles that i've been trying to highlight you see this candle i told you it started uh somewhere in the middle, middle then it went above it so we broke structure so sometimes even when you just look at candles on the day you can see that this candle broke structure you get so then you start trading there is a lot that i can analyze on this boom and crash this area there is a lot of information so which means there is a lot of psychology here you get there is a lot of psychology but you can learn for now you guys what i wish you is to learn more uh, practice be free to join my mentorship program but remember don't believe in account management there could be some serious account managers but most of them are scammers uh, someone was sending me uh, some nice comment they were like 
he was thanking me for alerting people about account management. You guys, all you need to do is not even look for signals. What you need to do is to look for knowledge. For me to analyze boom and crash, to analyze of two candles, even like these ones, these two candles, to look for the entry, these two candles, it cannot take more than 20 minutes if you've practiced it now. So you cannot tell me that you're not trading because you don't have time. You get if you're too busy, then that job should be paying you a lot that you don't need trading, you get. But then what I advise you is to look for knowledge. For me, most of the time, I don't even want to have that hassle of now I have to get someone a signal because I promised them every day I'll be sending them a signal. For me, there are days when I'm off, when I'm just doing my own things, you get. And now I don't have to, I don't want to have that pressure. That's why I was like, oh, let me just do mentorship for those that really want. Because I know in mentorship, we can discuss set, setups today and they're going to take effect tomorrow. You get, we can discuss setups today, they take effect tomorrow. Then you trade, or even you can send me a setup. You'll be like, oh man, I've seen this opportunity. I can check it out. I can take it. I may leave it. So for me, that's what is easy for me. I don't have a lot of time, but then at least I feel happy to educate someone you get for now wish you the best and peace